Not only did Prince William call your wife a bunch of names, you got knocked out. Like, how is he, how is Prince William not on the floor? Welcome back to The Observation. Some people are not concerned with getting rich. Yeah, I was genius. I love that. You know how embarrassing that is? He shook before we've actually, like, negotiated <laughs> terms. We, didn't. we all are going to die one day, and that could have been my day. Aloha and welcome back to The Observation. This is season two in 2023, the year of our Lord. And I'm actually in Hawaii right now. I'm in North Shore. I don't really know where I'm at, honestly. Um, and we're filming this at almost midnight because I tried so, so hard to try to film this on the beach today to make like a really epic background for everybody. and it would be like such a cool video and I actually drove to the opposite side which apparently never rains but it was raining all day today and it was like lashing rain and it took 45 minutes to get over there and by the time we got over there it just wasn't gonna happen there was really not a lot of options to film it and so we drove all the way back so if that doesn't show my commitment to this show I don't know what does um, and also that I'm filming this so, so late. Um, but I want to wish everyone a happy new year. First, I want to shout out Cash App. The observation is powered by Cash App on personal finance, major funds, and the stuff that matters. That's money. That's Cash App. And actually, during the break um, for Christmas, I was home with my mom and I got her to sign up for Cash App. I was actually shocked that she had not signed up with my code yet. Um, so we, we got her to use my code really cool experience if you haven't done it. Um, I kind of want to make a little tutorial video on how to use the code and everything because um, I didn't know where in the sign-up experience because I already had Cash App for so many years. It is, so I kind of want to help people figure out where to use it. But it's kind of after you put your information in, um, you scroll up to the bottom, you can put in Aubrey and you'll get $15 in free money. So it's super, super cool. Okay, we're going to come back to Hawaii, but first today on this show, we're going to be observing a few things. New Year's resolutions, what's in and what's out in 2023, DCG versus Gemini, Idaho murders, and SPF is going to jail. Um, so back to Hawaii and why I'm here. I wanted to make a new tradition um, in January to go somewhere warm and just be somewhere nice. I've done the New York City thing for many, many years, and if anyone knows if you live in New York City, it is the most miserable time in January and February, maybe the worst months of living in New York. Very bleak. I've put in my time. I've done seven years of that. And I just decided I wanted to rejuvenate myself, go somewhere warm. Um, so a friend lives out in Hawaii. I'm out here trying to, trying to learn to surf, actually. We'll see. I want to put a little vlog together and kind of film Hawaii because this is my first time here, actually. Um, and so if that turns out, I'll post it on the channel. So I spent the holidays with my family in Arizona, which was really, really nice. Um, we had a little bit of a chaotic uh, Christmas because um, there was, like many people, experienced a lot of flight delays. I could barely get out. It was very difficult leaving New York City. It was like pushing me back into New York. Like there was some gravity, some force keeping me in New York City um, when I was trying to escape. And I think I tried like three times. Um, so it didn't work out. Finally went home to see my family and basically got there on Christmas Eve. And we had a really, really nice time. Um, it was so nice to, to see my parents and my brothers. And it feels like the time that you have with your family, your immediate family just gets smaller and smaller as life carries on, not to put it on a downer note, but it, it, is, it, it is a little sad. But the fun thing was, is on uh, Christmas, we all got into the garage with my dad and, and we um, were like kind of playing karaoke and singing with him, which was really, really fun. Uh, he has his own band called American Made and he was just kind of jamming out in the garage and me and my brothers went out there and started singing with him and he just loved it. So um, the cool thing was we didn't even open presents until... I think it was like 8 or 9 p.m., which we never do. It's not really a normal tradition, but it was really nice because I think that there's such a focus on social media and everything about opening presents and 
kind of this performative Christmas and, you know, everyone's grown up. We don't need to open presents and do that whole thing. Not that that's not nice, but it was nice that our family was more focused on just being together and being goofy and singing like funny country songs in the garage compared to waking up and doing the same old thing just because that's what we do. Um, and another thought on that too is if you come from a family similar to mine where you know, Christmas isn't like crazy gifts. Like our family does basically like, um, lottery raffle tickets and like scratchers. And, um, what else do we do? Like just like funny stuff. I get like a bunch of socks and it's totally fine and normal. And I just hope that it's hard not to compare your life with other people's lives, but most people's lives are like that. They're not like the um, like exuberant gifts where people are getting like some sort of Escalade in their driveway or something. I don't even know what's cool anymore. Is an Escalade cool? That's no, not cool. What's cool? <laughs> I don't drive. I haven't driven in years, but you know what I mean? Where there's like people are getting a brand new car. Um, so just something to, to think about and put in perspective because it can feel like everyone's on a ski trip or doing something ridiculous on Instagram and it's just not reality. So that was a really, really nice time. Um, in terms of New New Year's, I spent it also with my parents. I've done that for two years in a row. It's been a lot nicer. I used to fly back to New York City every New Year's Eve and like go to a party. And that's just not how I feel anymore. Number one, because uh, it's always just not fun. Like it's never a good time. I remember one time I was um, an ex-boyfriend and I went on like this cruise ship around uh, like I flew back for this. I went on this like cruise ship around Manhattan and it was, it was a very nice gesture, but like that ship was just so weird. It was just a bunch of people from Jersey, no shade of Jersey, um, that were just like partying their ass off on, on this like cruise. Anyway, the whole point of the story is when we get back, so when we took off, like the tide or the water level around Manhattan was higher. And when we got back, it was lower. I don't even know how that makes sense, but basically they were trying to dock the boat and they like couldn't get people off of it. Chaotic. I don't know how you fuck that up, but there was someone in a wheelchair that couldn't like get, they had to get like pushed off the ramp. It was, it was honestly just chaotic. And so like you have a handful of things like that that happened to you on New Year's Eve and the same home with your parents is way more fun. And also, you know, like I said, I don't like to drink or party on New Year's Eve. Um, just like to, to hang with the fam. So, um, yeah. Anyway, also for New Year's resolutions, let's go into that. I haven't fully put down all my resolutions yet, which I usually do. And I also usually do a reflection of the year prior and I do a list of all my favorite days and how I do that is I go through my camera roll and I write down the day mostly because I'll remember because a picture was taken on that day most likely um, and what I did on that day um, because I think the years really can fly by and it's hard to not forget the moments which can Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't even know I, what I did in 2018, but it's really cool to write down your favorite days of the year and something I've practiced for a while, and I'll probably do it for 2022 too. It's just been so chaotic, um, even during this break, which wasn't really not a break at all. Um, so uh, yeah, something else that can be helpful to like practice gratitude and just reflect on the year prior and then you'll always have that piece of paper that kind of reminds you of what you liked about that year and who made it special so um okay so now that we're into what's in and what's out everyone's doing this but I, I was thinking about what's in and what's out for 2023 so what are we sticking with what are we what are we adding into our lives and what are we taking out is basically what this is about so uh, what's in red receipts on your text messages. I like the transparency. I think it's cool. I think people should know where they stand with you. Did you read their message? Yeah, you did. And they should know that you did. Don't hide behind. Oh, they read your message, but you don't know. Let them know. 
Um, short hair. I think people should just chop their hair. I think we've had long hair for a while. I'm saying this as I have long hair. I think people, short hair is in. Um, smoking cigs. I think it's cool again. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not saying I do, but I think if I'm in Paris, you know, sure. But I think in general, it's kind of a vibe. <laughs> Asking someone out in person, I think people should do it. Uh, thinking about your death or, um, you know, the monks do it. So I think it's, I think it's a good practice. That's in. What's in it? Taking time off, like European vacationing, full months. Take a full month off of work. Don't tell anyone why. Just put your request in for a full month. Um, out drinking. I think there's just a move towards sobriety. I'm seeing a lot online and people are just, it's not that drinking itself is not fun. Everyone knows that's a blast. What's not fun, what's out is embarrassing yourself, feeling like shit and like poisoning your body. I think people are just like, okay, we've all had enough. Um, going out on New Year's Eve, we talked about that. It's out. Um, athleisure. I think, I was going to put this te technically an in. I think what's in and what's out is at leisure, what's in is dressing up for things. Dress up for your flight. Dress up for things that other people are just slobs about. Because I think it just shows that you have manners and respect for your fellow human beings. So dressing up, at leisure's out. Uh, fanboying for Andrew Tate or Elon Musk, out. Serial killer obsession. We can talk about that in a little bit. It's out. VC is out. Being sick, personally, out. Seltzers, no. Saying GM on Twitter, no. The Dime Square aesthetic, which is, I don't know, I kind of like it. We'll move this one to the side. Uh, West Village, I think it's out, actually. I think West Village is out. I live there. I think that it's oversaturated at this point. People have been talking about it for years. I'm going to call it, it's out. People are going to move to a different neighborhood. Something is going to be cooler. It's never going to be fully out because they, it is the best like homes, but I think there'll, there'll be a shift towards some other neighborhood in Manhattan that people are going to envy. Um, Austin Butler, because he just continues to do the Elvis accent. We know that that movie's over. You filmed it two years ago. Um, podcasts are out. <laughs> no, but seriously, I do think ever there's too many podcasts. Just continue watching this one. Other ones, no. Long nails. I kind of have long nails right now, but just in general, I think th this is as far as I'll go, and this is too long for me. Long no nails are kind of gross. Cut those babies. All right. <laughs> That's all I have. On it. I think I could go on longer. Um, those were just my initial thoughts. So. so the biggest thing happening in crypto right now is basically DCG versus Gemini. And so most people have some awareness that this is happening if you're in crypto, that basically uh, there is a $900 million hole at Gemini Earn. So you have Gemini, the centralized exchange, and then you have their Earn product called Gemini Earn. If you sign up for Gemini Earn, you could earn up to 8% yield on your crypto. How they allowed for such a high yield was that they lent out customer money to Genesis, Genesis Global Capital, which is a subsidiary of Digital Currency Group. Digital Currency Group is this huge crypto conglomerate owned by Barry Silbert. Um, I know that sounds like kind of crazy, but just stay with me. So this... Um, Genesis Global basically uh, also had money locked up in FTX. And so about 50 days ago when FTX filed bankruptcy, Genesis Global Capital halted all withdrawals, anything happening, which then affected Ge Gemini Earn. Um, so basically this all goes back to FTX. Now, Basically, this week, Cameron Winklevoss put out a open letter calling out Barry Silbert, the CEO of DCG, Digital Currency Group. There's so many, so many acronyms in the space. I'm so tired of it. FTX, SBF, DCG. It's, we're, it's just too much. Um, but basically, Cameron called out Barry. Barry 
said like we're up to all of our payments are you know up to date and um you know it's on you guys to basically like the balls in your court cameron went back to barry and was like barry you're just kicking the can down the road you uh you owe our customers money um and the reason why this could be potentially bad is Cameron Winklevoss said that Digital Currency Group was commingling funds with Genesis, which would be bad if that's true. Uh, we don't know that. That's a bold statement to say, so he better be able to back that up because um, I'm sure there would be like a lawsuit to be making some accusations like that. Basically, commingling funds in between subsidiaries reminds me a lot of what we saw with Alameda and FTX, right? So I think the big takeaway here for everyone is if you hear that there is some big crypto company company that has a subsidiary, it's probably moving funds around and that's not backed by anything and it's at risk. So if you hear a subsidiary, not good. I think that's what our takeaway from this entire crypto collapse is. Um, not only that, but just self-custody. I mean, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do, but I would just say self-custody your funds. Um, so Barry basically has uh, until January 8th to pay them back. I don't know what happens. Is there like some just, they just fight it out? I don't know what happens, but it's pretty bad. Uh, it's like a $1 billion hole. We just need Coinbase to 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 hold on, but DCG did invest in Coinbase as well, so not that it would have that much effect. I pray every day that Brian Armstrong is still with us because maybe he's the only one that's doing it right. Um, but yeah, kind of a crazy, crazy situation. These other ones are not as long, but I have been following the Idaho murders very closely. And I want to go back to the thing that I was saying earlier about what's out. I feel like this guy that they've caught, I'm not going to say his name because I don't like glamorizing um, alleged serial killers. And he's not convicted, so like I'm not going to say his name. But the man that they have in custody for these murders of the four Idaho college students, um, they do say that he resembles Ted Bundy. I was watching the news when it broke and I was watching Fox because it's all my family watches and Nancy Grace was on there and she they put basically this guy's face and Ted Bundy's face next to each other and all they were saying is, does he look like Ted Bundy? He looks dead in the eyes. And I was just thinking to myself, this is a crazy, like this is basically the plot of Gone Girl. If you've ever watched Gone Girl, it's like they find somebody and then everyone basically comes out with their pitchforks. I'm not saying this guy is not guilty. I'm just saying that he's basically just gets in handcuffs and everyone's like, that's the guy, we got him. I mean, he also deserves his day in court. But the thing that I, I think is crazy is the court of public opinion is always like basically what people care about anyway. So Nancy Grace gets up there and she's... She's like, could you imagine looking into these eyes and seeing this killer right before? I mean, it's crazy. It's like sensationalism of how we talk about killers. And there's the Dahmer documentary on Netflix and all these serial killers, they basically become celebrities. And I think that this capitalism and this funding for movies and shows and podcasts, true crime shows. Yeah, it is interesting because like the human psyche is interesting of how could someone possibly do that? We've always had shows like that, Unsolved Mysteries, things like that for, for a long time, but it's gotten out of control. It's gotten way out of control. Like people glamorize serial killers and Ted Bundy and uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, all these movies that glamorize these killings, its it's gotten crazy. And I feel like it's inspired people to become murderer. Um, so I would say in 2023, we should tone that down a bit because it's, it's quite out of control. A quick update on SBF, even though he is out in 2023, I 
do not like saying his name because he's caused so much pain and it's just it's just tiresome and it's boring. Um, and I think we should move forward as an industry in any way we can, if that's possible, seen as what happens with the entire market with DCG and Gemini, but that's another story. Okay, so SBF, he pled innocent in a New York court today. Um, he asked the judge to keep the bail guarantors name secret. So the, the people that bailed him out of jail, he wants to keep quiet. And his lawyers argue that there's no need for public disclosure of these names. Sus. I wonder who it was. Or was it anybody at all? Did he bail himself out? You just don't know. The story is too wild. Um, but that's the update there. So I also watched the Harry and Meghan documentary series on Netflix, which I feel like should just be renamed to Meghan because that's who was talking most of this series. And I tried to keep an open mind because I, number one, I love the Royals, something that people don't know about me. I just like, I think it's really interesting. It embodies a lot of things that I enjoy, which is history, kind of like pop culture and traditionalism. Um, a lot of people don't like the Royals and you can tune this out if that's, if that's the case, but I do find it very interesting. And I was a fan originally of Meghan Markle. I thought she was really nice when she came in, watched the documentary, very cringe. And not cringe in the way that you wanna be cringe. Like sometimes there's cringe where you're like pushing it forward, but still respect. Just, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, Talk badly, but it felt very narcissistic. Something that a narcissist would put together and then put their husband's name on it, if you know what I mean. Um, but then I was doing some more research. Um, I've watched The Crown. I, I'm very well researched in The Monarch. And uh, I was just reading basic like, news and it turns out that Harry is coming out with his own memoir called The Spare, if you know anything about um, royal history, uh, you always have the heir to the throne and then you have the spare in case something happens to the heir. So the spare comes out this week and it was revealed on Twitter um, and also to The Guardian who got a sneak peek look at the book that Prince William knocked Prince Harry to the ground because he called Meghan Markle difficult, rude, and abrasive. Few thoughts there. Not only did Prince William call your wife a bunch of names, you got knocked out. Like, how is he, how is Prince William not on the floor? Not only that, apparently he knocked him to the ground and he broke the dog bowl, so it scratched up his back. And so he was had these cuts and was bleeding. And Will tells him not to tell Megan and Megan sees the cuts on his back and he's like, yeah, will knock me to the ground. Um, you know, this sounds appalling for the, for the Royals, but it's, for me, it just feels like what you would see at my Thanksgiving dinner with my family and my uncles. And no one would say that that would be bad. And also, <laughs> Harry, Harry, what I love about the story is Will was like, punch me back. And Harry's like, no, man. And he's like, and he just left. <laughs> he came back and apologized. But, you know, everyone's family has problems. The royals are not different. They're also a family and they have their own issues. I just think the whole story is very funny. And I am going to pre-order the book shamelessly because I got I to gotta know the tea. I got to know what's going on over there. This also makes me think, is Will just like getting in a fight with his brother and then this is how they used to like joke around or is he kind of an abusive dude you know i don't know i hope i hope prince harry calls out william's affairs and if and if he really drags the whole family like they're not coming back together i wish they could all just keep it secret and just hug it out and be, you know, family again, but, uh, doesn't seem like if he's dropping this book and people have already seen it, it's done, 
which means he's never going to be back in that family, which is really sad because um, I heard he was invited to his father's uh, coronation to become king. So just awkward, just like a really awkward family gathering every time you guys get together for any event ever. The whole story doesn't really make sense. Like, I'm trying to imagine, even if my husband, if my like brother-in-law called me rude, abrasive, and whatever, I'd be like, yeah, maybe. Maybe you were rude, Megan. Like, I don't know, man. I do feel like Megan is the problem. That song by Taylor Swift, like, I'm the problem, it's me. It's definitely Megan. Because now we know she's doing things internally, not just externally for, she's just very difficult. She's fine to be difficult, but like, geez, dude, like, I don't know, man. Whole thing's, whole thing's wild. Thanks for tuning in to episode one of season two of The Observation. We're going to be back with a ton of great content. We have some super good guest interviews lined up um, and hopefully some more vlog content of Hawaii. So stay tuned and I'll see you back here next time. Good luck and Godspeed. You don't own